Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're going to look at the Frosty Keypad Challenge from the SANS Holiday Hack 2024. Um, specifically, we're going to focus on the brute forcing of the pin for the gold solution. Um, in my blog will have the full write-up of the challenge, but this is going to really be focused on writing a script to brute force a five-digit pin, where we know the, the pin comes from four digits. So um, we are going to run into some rate limiting, and we'll bypass that as well. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look. Um, I've got the pin, the the challenge up here. Um, I'm not logged in on this machine, and so if I was logged in, I'd actually have access to a UV light that I could shine on the keys, and I'd see that the two, six, seven, and eight um, are all have fingerprints on them, and the other keys don't, as well as the enter key. So um, those are the keys that make up the pin, and I also know from the background that it's a five-digit pin. Um, we can try something like you know one, two, three, four, five, and hit enter, and just nothing happens. Um, so the first thing we need to do if we're going to try to brute force this is figure out how is this being submitted to the server. Um, so let's go ahead and open up our dev tools uh, and the network tab. And let's come here and we'll do our, we'll put in a pin again. Doesn't matter what we put and hit enter. And we can see here a post request gets sent. Um, we're kind of freezing up here a little bit. Okay. Uh, post request gets sent, sent to the, this, the URL I'm on slash submit ID equals null. Um, and it returns a 400. So 400 seems to be our failure response. Um, let's look at the post request itself. It has a body that is just, uh, it's JSON, and we can view it raw if we want, but it's got an answer key, and then the answer is a string. Um, and what else do we need to see? The response is a 400 is failure. I think, I think that gives us a pretty good idea. So let's grab, let's grab this URL through here and go over here and I've been trying to use uh, IDEs more, but this is such a short script. We're just, we're just going to go use Vim. So we're going to do Vim brute pin dot pi and I'll make this big. So what do we need to do? We're going to need requests. Requests is the Python library to send web requests. And we're going to need uh, from iter tools import product. Now product is the one where you say, Combinations and permutations involve like taking a group and taking a certain number from that group and ordering them. Product just says, give me all the com the pins of a certain length com starting from these care these objects. So uh, you'll see in a second as we start to use that um, URL equals. Let's just paste this right here. So we have that. We can say digits equals two six seven eight, and we want to put that that. Now we have those. And now we can say like four pin in product. And then we'll pass it digits and we'll say repeat equals five to go to five digit pin. In fact, we can do print pin here, make this like two, three, and run down here and we do python root pin.py. And if we need to spell requests right. And boom. And so you can see here, we got the, giving us all the possible three digit pins that are made up of these numbers. And it, so we want five digit pins. Um, that would be, if we think about the math of this, we're gonna choose for five spaces, each one of them has four options. So it's gonna be four times four times four times four times four, which is 1,024. So that's the space. It's definitely not too big to brute force over. Um, so cool. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and just rewrite the pin is equal to uh, join and basically we have a bunch of we're gonna have a bunch of digits here and we want to make it into one string so I'm gonna say um, map sir and uh, like that so what I'm basically gonna do is take each pin each item in the pin so like two 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 turn it into string so string two string two string two and then I'm gonna join that with the empty string so it puts them onto one big string uh, just makes it cleaner to deal with uh, now I can say response equals requests dot post URL JSON equals, and we know we have answer, and then we're going to have pin like that. And we know if response.status code is not equal to 400, we want to break. We don't know what success looks like. We just know success is not a 400, or at least we hope. Uh, and then when we break, we can say print uh, pin. I don't know I keep typing ping. Uh, response and response dot text. So just give ourselves some, some data to look at. And we'll come down here and we will run. And very quickly here, so if you remember, uh, 2227 is probably like 
the third or fourth pin we're going to get to, um, we're getting an error. And it's a four, we're getting a 429 response, too many requests from this user agent, limited to one request per one second. So that's not good. Um, we need to work around that. And so my first response to, to think of how, how we're going to work respond to this is, um, we, well, well, obviously it's telling me I can't do this too fast. Let's just sleep and retry. And so what that really means is, I'll come up here and I'll say uh, import time. And now we come down here and instead of just doing a request, this we'll say while true. So we're going to enter a loop. We'll do our request. Uh, and then we'll say, we'll go ahead and grab this here, put it up here. Uh, like that. And then we can say, just so we can see what's happening. Um, if response dot that is code is not equal to 429 break. And that will break out of this while loop. So basically we're just gonna make this request over and over again until we get non 429. And because doing that is likely to just trigger more, we'll say time.sleep one. So if we get a 429, we sleep for a second, which should clear the thing. And then we make the request again. If that happens to return 429 again, we'll do it again. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm putting this print up in this loop, because if something I'm not expecting happens, I want to be seeing what's going on, at least for an initial look. Um, so anyway, at this point, now we know we've got a good non-429 status code. Then we want to check and see if we have a 400. If not, we want to exit because we're done. Uh, so let's take a look at what this looks like. And um, you can see we're getting kind of bursts. So like it starts off with some 400s, then some 429, then some 400s. And it seems to be working slow. Um, and I might miss my, you know, well, I guess I'm not gonna miss because if everything's 429, I recover from it, um, but it's too slow for me. I don't like this. I want to do better. And there's something we can do better if you're looking at these error messages, because it says too many requests from this user agent. Now that's a weird way to do it. Normally you do from the IP. Um, but if they're really doing it on user agent, we can change that. We're in complete control over that. Um, so let's give that a try. I probably could have, if I was really racing to try to solve this, I would have left that running in the background because we probably would have just gotten it before we got this far. But um, you know, purity, let's, let's get it, let's do it the right way, right? Um, so we'll import uh, random and we will import string. And down here in our loop, um, we, we, if we're right about this, we're not gonna need this loop anymore, but it's just effectively gonna always go into the loop, do this thing, break out of the loop. So it doesn't cost us anything to have this. So we're just gonna leave it here for now. So we'll say UA equals, uh, Double empty string join something. So we're gonna we're gonna get a list of characters and we're gonna join them into a string. And that list of characters is gonna come from random dot choices research choices string dot ASCII letters, and we'll say k equals twenty. So now we're setting ourselves a UA string that is twenty random characters. And so then we come down here and we can say headers equals user agent, and that is UA. Let me close that. Uh, let's make this a little bigger so we can get it on one line. Um, and so now we set our user agent string to be this random 20 characters and we change it every time. And so now in theory, we're not going to get any more 429s. Um, I'm going to do one other thing here just because it's annoying me. There's all these extra new lines here. I'm going to just do a dot strip right there. That should remove an extra new line. And now we're seeing 400s across the board, straight up all 400s. Um, and boom, we got a success. Uh, we can actually try it, 22786, 22786, success. We've completed the frosty keypad. Um, that's it for this video. Just the, the point here is to make sure to, to really pay attention to what your error messages are telling you. That's important. Um, and uh, I think this while loop is, is a very useful thing to have when brute forcing, especially if you're gonna have rate limiting and things where it allows you to try over. So this is a nice structure to learn, even if we didn't really use it here. Um, a good one to have in your tool belt going forward. So uh, that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will talk to you next time. Bye.